Here's another set of examples for our lesson one, solving linear equations in one variable. Here we have fractions in our equation, so we have to get rid of the fractions first. And I put four different kinds of fractions on there. You'll see in just a moment why there are four different kinds of fractions. And, how, and so you can see how you need to manipulate these. The first type is where both fractions are the same, have the same denominator. So in that case, you're going to multiply the left side and the right side of the equation by that particular denominator. So multiply the left side by 3 and multiply the right side by 3. Again, when you multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, nothing really changes in the equation. You just simplify it. So here you can see that when you multiply 3 times the first term, the 3 will be cancel out by this 3 and you end up with 4x. And if you then do the same again for the second term, again, the 3s will cancel out. You sim simply add, end up with a negative 2. So when you do that, you get 4x minus 2 equals 1 times 3, which is 3. And at this point, you solve it exactly the same way as before. You move all the terms with the x to one side, all the terms without the x to the other side. In this case, the minus 2 goes to the right. So you end up with 4x equals 3 plus 2. Remember, the sign changes when you cross equal sign. So 4x equals 5. Now divide both sides by the numerical coefficient from the variable. And you get x equals 5 over 4. The second example, again, you have fractions, but this time the denominators are not the same. And you then need to go and find what we call the lowest common denominator. In this case, the lowest common denominator is simply going to be the product of those two denominators, 5 times 6, which is 30, which means you're going to multiply the left side by 30, and you're going to multiply the right side by 30. When you do that, you distribute the 30 over the first and the second term in those parentheses. And so what you do here is you say 6 goes into 30 5 times, so 5 times x is 5x. Plus, 5 goes into 30 6 times, 6 times 2x is 12x. And then here on the right side, 3 times 30 is 90. Again, so you can see how that was done. You say 6 goes into 30 5 times, 5 times x is 5x, 5 goes into 30 6 times, 6 times 2x is 12x, and here simply 3 times 30. At that point, you combine the x's on the left side, so that's 17x equals 90, and then you divide both sides by the numerical coefficient in front of the x, that cancels out, and x is equal to 90 divided by 17. Okay, on to our next example. Here you have an example where you have three denominators, they're all different, but notice carefully that the smaller denominators fit easily into or evenly into the large denominator. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply this term by what you need to make the denominator the same as 8, and you're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of this term by what you need to make the denominator equal to 8. So what that means is you don't do anything to the first term, that is still 2x divided by 8, minus, but now in the second term, you're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the number to make the denominator 8. That is now equal to the, le the, the right side, and here you're going to multiply both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by what you need to do to make this into an 8, which is the number 4. Of course, you do the same with the numerator. So the trick is, if all the denominators fit evenly into the large one, you multiply the top and the bottom of each fraction of that have the small denominators by the number required to make the denominator equal to the large one. Okay, after you do that, you'll end up with 2x over 8 minus 2 times 3, which is 6x over 8, equals 4 over 8. So now that you have the same denominators everywhere, you can simply multiply both sides of the equation by 8 to get rid of the denominators. So multiply by 8, by 8, all the denominators are now gone because they cancel out, so now you end up 2x minus 6x equals 4. Now you combine all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the other side, so 2x minus 6x is minus 4x equals 4, and now divide both sides by the numerical coefficient. That cancels out, you have x equals minus 1. And finally, the, the last example, notice that multiplying the two denominators here, you'd end up with a really big denominator, uh, the small denominator does not fit evenly into the large denominator. What do you do there? Well, there's two techniques you can follow. If you're lucky, there's a number there called the lowest common denominator that both denominators fit into. And to find that one, the easiest thing to do is to take the large denominator and multiply it first times 2, 
then times 3, then times 4, then times 5, and so forth, and see if the small denominator fits evenly into that new number. So, starting out with 16 multiplied times 2, that gives us 32. Does 12 fit evenly into 32? And the answer is, no, it does not. So the next thing you can do is take 16 and multiply it times 3. That gives you 48, and I say, does 12 fit into 48? And the answer is yes. So that means that 48 can be your new lowest common denominator. So you're going to now rewrite this in terms of the new lowest common denominator. To do that, you say to yourself, well, what must I do to 12 to make it 48? Well, to make 12 into 48, you have to multiply 12 times 4, and whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the denominator. Same with 16. How many times does 16 go into 48? That's 3 times, so to multiply the denominator by 3, you get 48, so you must also multiply the numerator by 3. So this then becomes the following. x over 12, and then you multiply both the top and the bottom by 4, plus 3x over 16, multiply both the top and the bottom by 3, that equals 5. Now when you do that, you get 4x divided by 48, plus 9x divided by 48 equals 5. And of course, now you also must multiply the right side by 48 over 48. So multiply this times 48 over 48. And so then you get 4x over 48 plus 9x over 48 equals 5 times 48. That's 240 over 48. And then you can see that you can get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides by 48, so multiply the left side by 48, multiply the right side by 48, the denominators cancel out, so you end up with 4x plus 9x equals 240. Add the left side terms together, you get 13x equals 240, and finally divide both sides by the coefficient in front of the x, that cancels out, you have x equals 240 over 13. And there you have some examples of how to get rid of the fractions.